So, uh, I want to start off with two caveats before I speak. Uh, one is, uh, I'm not talking about Vietnam, right? I'm talking about the West, and I'm talking about uh, specifically uh, the East Midlands of the UK. Um, I don't know enough about Vietnam to talk about it. Uh, if any Vietnamese guys want to come and speak to me afterwards, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on the subject. But um, this isn't what that's about. Number two. I'm going to be talking in big swathes about groups of people, and there are exceptions to this. Uh, I was speaking to Sam last week, and Sam gave me an amazing exception to this. Not everyone fits into this, but I'm talking about big groups, and I think we can talk about big groups, right? I think it's sensible. We can talk about societies and cultures and groups and uh, different demographics. Like, it's not a stupid thing to talk about, you know, the West is more inclined to do this and the East is more inclined. That's not a stupid thing to say, but just be aware that there are exceptions, right? And I'm not trying to talk about every single person. Okay, that side. My job before I came to Vietnam was I was a call taker for the ambulance service in England. So my job was uh, you get home, uh, you get home, say, and something terrible would have happened in your house. And you get home, and uh, you call me, you dial 999, and you'd say, I've just got home and uh, my partner has drowned, my partner has committed suicide, my partner's had a heart attack, and uh, this isn't a film. So it's not the case that uh, you call ambulance and then you put the phone down and the ambulance comes, it's not magic. I'm gonna get the ambulance to you, and in the meantime, I'm gonna stay on the phone with you while the ambulance is en route, okay? Ambulance is coming to you, I'm gonna go through CPR with you, I'm going to tell you how to cut down that noose. I'm going to tell you how to deal with the drowning. I'm going to tell you how to deal with the CPR. This was, this was my job. And it was a really fulfilling job. It was, a, it was an amazing job. It was really hard as well, as you can imagine. But it was good. So that was part of my job. The other part of my job was, uh, was the non-emergency stuff. And we get an amazing amount of non-emergency stuff at the ambulance service. It's not all, it's not all brains on the floor. It's, uh, sometimes it's old ladies on the floor. A huge number of, uh, uh, of just helping old people up off the ground when they fall. Um, I had uh, one call one morning from a lady who said, uh, I fell down, I fell down in the night and um, I need your help to get up because I can't get up myself. And I said, uh, okay, what's the address? Address into the system. What's the telephone number? Put the telephone number system. And, um, I said, oh, I haven't had any calls. How long, have you been on, how long have you been on the ground? She said, I've been on the ground for about seven hours. Seven hours? Well, why, why didn't you call? She said, I wanted to just wait for you guys to open at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> We're always open. You can always call the ambulance. You don't have to wait until nine o'clock in the morning. But um, I want to talk about Florence. Right? And this is the one, one, one of the many calls that stick with me. But Florence called and uh, she said she'd fallen down and it was a busy, like a busy Friday night in December. And we said, okay, we'll send an ambulance to you, Florence. We'll come up, we'll pick you up, we'll put you back on your feet. And uh, we send the ambulance. The ambulance is on its route. And uh, someone else calls and says, oh, I'm having a heart attack. So uh, Florence's ambulance sh shoots off, goes to the person with having a heart attack. Another ambulance leaves, goes towards Florence. Someone's being stabbed. Ambulance goes off to someone being stabbed. I eventually spoke to Florence after something like six and a half hours. And she calls me and she says, and she was terrified. Like she was just, she convinced herself after six and a half hours on the floor that she wasn't gonna get an ambulance. She convinced herself that she was gonna die on that floor. And she was lying there in a pool of her own shit and just begging me to send an ambulance to her. And uh, that shouldn't really happen to anyone, right? Like, Florence's social structure, Florence's support network was so weak. She had such, so little structure around her, so little community around her, that she didn't have anyone to call on. She, didn't, she couldn't say to anyone else, please come and pick me up, instead of, of, of being able to call on someone to help her, she had to call strangers and ask them to come and help her. And uh, the strangers were busy. And so they took seven or eight hours to get to her, and eventually they did. And this isn't an isolated incident. I'm, I'm highlighting Florence, but like this is one of, this is one of 
hundreds and hundreds of calls that I took over a career doing it. It happens all the time. It's, it's literally happening now. Like this minute, there is an old lady on the floor who needs an ambulance, who can't have one, who doesn't have anyone else to pick them up. And the, and the insane thing is that uh, this isn't even the job of a paramedic, right? I don't know if you guys know any paramedics, any doctors, but like, they haven't got into this to go and pick up old ladies off the floor. I mean, that's, they, they, they go into it. They go into it for the CPR. They go into it for the drowning. They go in for the excitement. Like, uh, we're, just, we're filling in. The paramedics are filling in, uh, picking up Florence off the floor because no one else is doing it. Right? That's not really what their job is. Okay? And so it's like, it's killing us. It's killing Florence. It's, and you could just say, you could just say, fuck the baby boomers, right? Fuck the baby boomers. They brought us Brexit. They brought us Trump. They brought us climate change. So fuck those guys. But this is our grandparents. This is my grandmother right now. This is my, my grandfather. This is going to be my grand. My, it's going to be my parents in 20 years. It's going to be us in 60. This is going to happen to us. What, do you think that you're fucking special? That Florence isn't going to be you? Of course. Like, why would you have more structure than her? You're probably going to have less. And just on that topic, it's not strictly relevant, but like, it was just so touching that I couldn't. There was a 16-year-old girl in Malaysia last week, beginning of last week, and she put a poll on Instagram, right? She doesn't have anyone to go to. Her social structure that surrounds her, that supports her, the social structure is Instagram, right? So she puts a, a poll on Instagram, right? A, live, B, die. 69% of her fucking Instagram social structure votes, 69% votes die, and she kills herself. This was the beginning of last week, right? That's how poor our social structure is. That's, this woman had so little support that uh, that's what she called on and fucking Instagram turned around and voted in the majority for her to die. So this is our problem. And it's getting worse. This is the level of uh, people living alone in the US. And uh, it's, it's going up and up and up and it's not going to stop going up because we're more and more isolated. This is the level of trade union membership. And say what you want about trade union membership, but it's a symbol of us being connected to everyone else, right? It's a symbol of us seeing ourselves as a, as a part of a greater whole. Like, I am, a, I am one, I am a teacher, I am a dock worker, I am a steel maker, and I am part of a greater whole and I rely on them, right? So I'm a part of a trade union. But it's going down because we see ourselves more and more as individuals and less and less as, as, as part of a greater whole. Less and less as part of a community. This is volunteer hours. This is the best info. It's, it, again, it's, it's going down. Like, it's, it's, we are less and less part of a community and we're more and more individuals. And uh, that's killing us. You might as well smoke 15 cigarettes a day as be on your own. Like, this is killing us. It killed a 16-year-old girl in Malaysia, and it's going to kill us, and it's, it's, it's going to get us. So I was thinking about uh, all these calls for all these people that I get lying on the floor, right? And uh, I was living in the east of the, east of the UK, and uh, the names of the people that I was getting calls for, they were these old traditional English names, right? Parker, Gardner, Hobbs, Hall. Which is strange because the East Midlands is a pretty diverse area, right? We've got a big Southern Asian uh, community, Southern Asian, Asian British community. And I, the thing about data, right? The thing about uh, thinking about getting together data of the people who fall down is sometimes the, the things that are left out of the data are as interesting as the things that are in the data. And do you know who isn't? isn't calling up, who isn't asking for answers? Mrs. Hussein, Mrs. Ali, and Mrs. Mohammed are not calling up and asking to be picked up by the ambulance crews. They're, they're just, they're not. And that's really interesting because they're calling up for other things. They have strokes, they have heart attacks, uh, they have all kinds of other problems, but they're not calling asking to be picked up off the floor. 
And I was thinking about the kind of the lifestyles of, of these communities. And I thought, oh, okay. Well, the thing is, Mrs. Mohammed, she probably lives with her children. She probably lives with her grandchildren. This is my experience of Southern Asian British communities. She lives with the children, she lives with the grandchildren, she lives next door to her nephew, her daughter-in-law works around the corner at the shop, her son-in-law is an accountant down the road. Like, the communities are really strong. Like, really strong. And so I thought, my God, an answer. That was easy. All we have to do is strengthen our communities. And not only will we strengthen trade union membership and health and obesity and depression and loneliness, but also Mrs. Florence won't be on the fucking ground begging for help at 2 o'clock in the morning. Fucking brilliant. Amazing. A solution. That was easy. Fantastic. And then I thought about the practicalities of actually living with your grandparents. And I thought about my relationship with my grandmother. And uh, it wasn't great, I'll be honest. Um, I don't know what your guys' relationship was with your grandparents. Uh, but I saw my grand, both my, my grandmothers, uh, my grandfather, I, twice a year. And it was fucking war. It was just, well, English war. So it was very passive aggressive and it was just long looks across the dinner table. Uh, <laughs> but it was, you know, like, it was, it, was, it was bad. Like, I had a bad relationship with all my grandparents. And um, so I was thinking about this. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm a cis guy. Like, I don't. I, I had tattoos and piercings and weird beliefs and listened to weird music, but like, I, I'm not transgender, I'm not gay, like, it's fucking easy being me compared to being lots of people. So what must it be like to be like transgender and growing up living in the same house as your grandparents? And I thought about the weight, the lead weight that that would put on your individuality, like how much you can flourish as a human being. Because Maybe we've destroyed community, right? We've destroyed community. But maybe in that destruction, we have cleared the ground for the flourishing of individuality. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you some statistics about the flourishing of LGBT rights, which is super important and great and fantastic. But I'm not just talking about LGBT rights, right? I'm talking about just anyone who's weird. Um, there's this thing that people do where um, they, they make a giant pillow and uh, they print off their favorite manga character, right? Big pillow, favorite manga character, and then they have sex with the pillow. That's the thing, you can do that, you can buy that. And fucking great, go for it, fucking knock yourself out. I love being in a world where there are fucking weird people having sex with pillows. Go for it. And I'm, I'm happy to be in a world full of unusual people. Um, and I feel like that's flourishing and that's increasing all the time. And that's super exciting. So this is the uh, level of LGBT, people identifying as LGBT in the US. It's constantly going up. This is the acceptance of LGBT. And my argument, my argument tonight is that it's our destruction of community. It's our destruction of trade unions. It's our destruction of, 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 of living in a in part of a greater community that has allowed the flourishing of LGBT has allowed the flourishing of anyone who's weird, and I'm looking at you guys when I say that. Um, <laughs> so my question really, if I'm right, okay, is, is it worth it? Like, is it, is this a, it's, apparently this is a fucking bargain that we've made. We've made, this is what we're doing, right? Like, we've decided to destroy our communities and they're dying. But in their place, we have this flourishing of individuality, with this flourishing of, of transgender and gay rights, which just couldn't have fucking existed 10 or 15, 20, 30 years ago. When I was a kid, no, like there was no transgenderism. That wasn't a thing that existed in the world. And it's fucking great that it does. But what if we need to destroy our communities to have that? Is that something that we're happy to do? So that's something I like to think about. And I'd also like to say that um, what I think is maybe part of the solution to bring us like into a solution pleasant finish after fucking my dark bullshit 
I think you guys are all fucking part of the solution, right? You guys are here on a Thursday night discussing stuff. You're part of a community. Like, the, the Philosophy Forum is a community. Like, it is a non-hierarchical community of people to get together and talk about stuff. And I think maybe this is the solution, right? This is going to be the future community of what actually saves us and what gives us the support, but without judging us for collecting butterflies or whatever it is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. One more round of applause for Mr. Chris Higginson, please. Beautiful, Chris. Yeah.